Hoffman? As you tune in this morning, I pray that you will enjoy our worship on this Pentecost Sunday. And he's going to play for a few minutes and then at 10 o'clock our service will begin. So welcome to River Church's online stream service from St. Peter and St. Paul, those great men of faith. Thank you. 
Well, good morning and welcome, everybody. It's 10 o'clock. It's Sunday morning. It's also Pentecost, Whitson, White Sunday, when we remember the Holy Spirit coming upon the disciples and those gathered in Jerusalem. It's the birthday of the church. So happy birthday to you, one and all. If you're a member of the church, whatever denomination, baptized into God's family. The words on your screen say, the Lord be with you. And also with you. We've got a treat for you now. And we're going to have some little videos expressing uh, a welcome in different languages with different <laughs> smiles. So enjoy our few clips and then we will have our opening hymn. So over to you, Alex. Let's share these videos. Guten Morgen, Jesus lift dich. Good morning, Jesus loves you. From Sharon and Millie and Bailey. Ohio goes I mess up. Ciao, Jesus. Good morning, Jesus loves you. Hola, Jesus. Hi everyone, greetings from sunny Nottingham from me, Simon. And me, Julia. Just to say, Gara Morgan. Jesus es Gatir. That was good morning. Jesus loves you. We hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye. A little bit of fun to share. Thank you for all the contributions. So now we're going to sing in English, but if you want to sing in another language, that's perfectly all right. Light of the world. Here I am to worship. Let's sing together as Andy plays. Thank you. 
we're here to worship. And the good news is we can worship wherever we are. We're not constrained by location. We can worship in our hearts, but it's good to worship out loud as well, to fill those lungs and to sing. It's also good to pray. And I'm going to invite you to join with me in the collect for purity, asking God to cleanse us because he knows us and he loves us. So I invite you to join with me in our opening prayer, saying together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now with Christians around the world, we join in the prayer that Jesus taught, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We come to our confession. There's been a lot about washing hands over the last few weeks, and I hope you're all very versed in that and good at washing your hands. But actually, how do we wash our hearts? How do we wash ourselves ready to receive God's Holy Spirit? Well, we say sorry and we repent, and God in his love forgives us because what Jesus has done. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments, hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And together we say, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We've been forgiven. We're ready to receive God's word. We're going to hear a little bit about the Tower of Babel, Babylon. And Chris uh, popped up to the British Museum and saw an excellent display there, an exhibition of Babylonian works. He's going to read to us about the beginnings of Babylon, Genesis chapter 11. Thank you, Chris. He's just going to unmute himself uh, on his screen and we'll be ready to go. The first lesson comes from Genesis chapter 11, reading from verses 1 to 9. You know, the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, look, they are one people. They all have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. 
Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth and they left off the building. Therefore it was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Chris. We're going to sing before our second reading. I invite you to sing this hymn as a prayer. Be still for the presence of the Lord. The Holy One is here. And when we say here, the Lord is wherever you are this morning. So let's sing together as Andy plays. Be still, a prayer and a hymn combined together. going to have a wonderful reading from Acts. Jeremy's going to share with us and uh, be patient with him because he has to read out all uh, all the, a different selection of countries and well you'll find out about it. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. Thanks Jeremy. Good morning. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house <clears throat> where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. 
all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now, there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let, it, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jeremy, thank you. A great gathering of people from all over the place. We've already heard some of those languages spoken. Uh, Italian, similar to Roman, I'm sure, Latin. And in a moment, you're going to see a lovely picture. Han, Hannah and Sam put together a welcome in Arabic. But firstly, there's a picture from Dylan. Uh, he's made something with Lego. Lego is his favorite thing at the moment. So thank you, Dylan. And then you can see a picture that Isaac's done. Uh, Isaac and Imogen went for a lovely walk with their mum and dad yesterday. And Holly and Josh posted some super pictures of them. But this is a picture he's done. You can see the little flames above their heads. So thank you for doing that for us, Isaac. And then you have Hannah and Sam with Happy Pentecost, Jesus Loves You in Arabic. And there were Arabs who heard that message in Jerusalem all those years ago. So here we are. It's the time for our sermon. It's the birthday of the church. It's a funny old birthday this year, but happy birthday anyway. You can see behind me, I've got some birthday balloons and some lovely colorful flowers. You can celebrate in all sorts of ways. But this year we get to experience what millions of our brothers and sisters around the world know, worship in lockdown, only able to celebrate in ones and twos and threes not allowed to gather together legally. Now, the good news is that God, the Holy Spirit, is not locked down. In fact, the Lord, the giver of life, is with each of us in our homes. That's exciting. You can experience the Holy Spirit. You don't need to reach out and touch the screen, you know. Actually, God, the Holy Spirit, is with us. He is the one who gives us life. And there isn't more of God in one place than another. We don't need to rush off to a mountaintop or to a beautiful valley or to a building. Yes, we can feel God's presence, and sometimes we do encounter that in different ways in different places. But there's no more of God in one place than another. Now, Jesus had commanded his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for power from the Spirit. And they waited and they prayed together for 10 days. And the city began to fill up with Jewish pilgrims from all over the known world. There was a festival about to take place. Those waiting, though, probably became a little bit impatient. You know, you're waiting for something. When's it going to happen? Are we nearly there yet, Dad? 
When was this gift from Jesus going to arrive? What would it be like? Now, they didn't need to worry because God's timing is perfect. It always is. But we don't know the bigger picture and we do get frustrated. We do wonder. Anyway, the Jews had gathered seven weeks after Passover to bring their harvested fruits to the temple. It's a festival still celebrated today. They'd come from across the Roman Empire and beyond that. And early in the morning, it was a great sound, a rushing wind, and little flames divided. What a strange image. God's power. And they began to speak. They began to announce publicly the wonderful works of God in various languages as the Spirit enabled them. And a big crowd gathered. And Peter, Peter, the one who denied Jesus in front of a little slave girl, and swore he knew nothing about Jesus, denied him three times and broken down in tears. Here was Peter jumping up in front of this vast crowd and telling them about Jesus and what had happened 50 days before. Many in turn believed and were saved and were baptized. And when they went home to their own countries, they took the good news of Jesus the Messiah with them, and it spread like wildfire. And it continues to spread. And it's really exciting to hear stories of people coming to faith in the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit is at work today. It doesn't make the headlines. We only get the tragic news. And we need to pray for those things that, that are tragic. But we also need to give thanks to God for what he's doing in bringing people to himself. The Spirit of God rested on them. But who is the Holy Spirit? Well, recently I read a book by Ben Stokes. It was about last summer. He's an English cricketer and he helped England win the World Cup and also draw the Ashes series against Australia. Thanks, Jill. This is a good book. Need to give it back to you. He mentions when he addressed the team, they, he helped fire them up. Defeat was on the horizon. And Ben Stokes gave them a good fighting spirit. Come on, lads, let's not lose to these Aussies. And they were inspired and they went on and they won. Now, what about the Dunkirk spirit? Was that the real thing? And then the spirit of 66, when Wembley saw the Football World Cup lifted by Bobby Moore. Well, God, the Holy Spirit doesn't just inspire and encourage for a short period of time. He is the giver of life, that precious commodity we cannot give ourselves or others. The giver of spiritual fruits, love, joy, peace, patience. Goodness me, we need a lot of patience at the moment, some more than others. But we need that joy and that peace that we may rest at night. Understanding, self-discipline, self-control. We live in a world where there's not much self-control, but that's a gift of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives gifts of leadership, of teaching, of preaching, of prophecy, administration. The giver of breath who raises our souls to life from death. You can read about God's Spirit. You can ask for the gifts. We read of them in 1 Corinthians 12. And we can grow the fruits. Galatians 5 gives us a wonderful list. Now, many of you have been cultivating flowers and vegetables and fruits recently. There's been quite a lot of time for that. And maybe we need a bit of rain or you've been using hose pipes. But let us cultivate the fruits of the Spirit in our lives as God's life flows through us. The Spirit was poured out that day in Jerusalem and continues to be poured out. Let us get drenched and grow, sharing God's love in the world, bearing fruits of repentance and new resurrection life. Jesus gave us life that we might have it in fullness and share it with others to his praise and glory. So happy birthday, church, locally, nationally, and for those watching overseas, internationally. God bless you. We're going to affirm together our faith, the Christian faith, rooted in time and space. Please join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to our intercessions now. And you can make yourselves comfortable. You may want to kneel down. That's all right. Or stay seated. And Vicky's going to lead us in our prayers. Even though we cannot be physically together in one building today, we can pray together as God's family. So in the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to God the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Strengthen Justin, our Archbishop. Rose, Bishop of Dover. Gilbert, Bishop in Madagascar and all your church in the service of Christ, that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen. Give wisdom to all in authority, and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and, and of peace, that we may honour one another and seek the common good. We pray for Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, and for our government in the decisions they have to make. Give them your wisdom, Lord. Wisdom for carrying the responsibility for our economy and our health that the right decisions would be made about how and when lockdown is eased and greater clarity about the process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he lo loves us. Give us wisdom, Lord, as the restrictions are gently limited, gently lifted, that we will have cautious good sense and care for all those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray especially for Phyllis, for Paula, Jean, Joe, Pam, Lynn, and Jill. We also pray for people suffering from mental health issues and for those who care for them. We pray for staff, doctors, nurses and cleaners, all those working in our hospitals. Give them stamina, compassion and protection from the virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. We pray especially for families who cannot grieve together at this time. According to your promises, grant us a share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, help us to trust you. Help us to know 
that you are with us. Help us to believe that nothing can separate us from your love. Rejoicing in the fellowship of your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Vicky. So we come to our final song, one that many of you know and will enjoy. You might want to clap. You might want to raise your hands. Praise the Lord and sing together. Shine, Jesus, shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining on this beautiful sunny day. Let's sing together. shine fill this land fill this world afresh with your holy spirit i'm going to offer you a blessing and then we're going to have our montage and then if you wish to sign into a zoom meeting from 11 uh, there'll be an opportunity to see some smiling faces and uh and, and share a greeting with one another on this pentecost so grab a cup of coffee after the service but as you head off to do whatever you're going to do today, water your gardens, talk to people, you might go and do some exercise. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth and give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and strengthen you to proclaim in word and work what God has done. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, 
the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon each one of you, your families, those whom you love and care for today and forevermore. Amen. So God bless you. And our final words this morning. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, montage. By grace alone, somehow I stand Where even angels fear to tread Invited by redeeming love Before the throne of God above He pulls me close with nail-scarred hands Into His ever Love
Today we feel the wind beneath our wings. Today the hidden fountain flows and plays. Today the church draws breath at last and sings as every flame becomes a tongue of praise. This is the feast of fire, air and water, poured out and breathed and kindled into earth. The earth herself awakens to her maker and is translated out of death to birth. The right words come today in their right order, and every word spells freedom and release. Today the gospel crosses every border, all tongues are loosened by the Prince of Peace. Today the lost are found in his translation, whose mother tongue is love in every nation.